Hey guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really inexpensive 2-in-1 laptop slash tablet from Evo. This recently went on sale for $79 on Walmart's website. We have 4 gigs of RAM, an Intel Celeron N4000, and it runs Windows 10 in S mode. I've never personally owned a laptop from this manufacturer. It's either Evo or Evo, but I'm going to call it Evo. I've seen these all over the place for really cheap, but they usually run the Atom Z8350. But those Atoms are really dated by now and they can hardly get out of their own way. But I personally really like this little Intel Celeron N4000. I own a couple mini laptops with this chip and I think it's a great performer if you can get it for the right price. I'm not expecting much from this Evo 2-in-1 given that I only paid $80 for it, but I know there's a lot of people that'll be looking at this online with this sale going on and wanting to know how it performs. So in this video, we'll do a quick unboxing. I'll go ahead and get everything set up. We'll run some benchmarks, see how this thing performs. I might test out some PC games and if everything goes okay, We'll get into a little bit of emulation by the end of this video. So first things first, you're obviously going to receive the tablet itself. It has a 10.1 inch screen. We also have the keyboard attachment, which makes this a two in one. And it feels really heavy. It actually feels like this should have an extra battery in it, but I don't believe it does. I already noticed that the Celeron sticker is on crooked. So whoever put this on really didn't care about it. And it feels like there's something loose inside of here. We'll get to that in just a second. Inside of the accessories box, you're going to receive the charger, and I believe this came with a stylus. It's known as a smart stylus. Not sure how smart this is, but it is powered by a AAA battery. So overall, the whole setup doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's definitely all made out of plastic, but this little crooked Celeron sticker is really bugging me. I might have to peel that off a little later on down the road. So the first thing I noticed when I picked up this keyboard out of the box is it feels like there's something loose in here. And yeah, if you shake it around a little bit, there is something loose. It's not an extra battery. I think the PCB is kind of hanging off inside of here. That's not a good sign. The keyboard does attach to the tablet with these little magnets here, but unfortunately mine's not working well. And I'm not sure if this is going to be the case with every single one of them, but mine's not making contact properly. And with the slightest touch, it'll disconnect the keyboard from the tablet, even when I'm trying to type on it. So far, not great, but I do want to go over the specs. For the CPU, we have the Intel Celeron N4000. This is a dual core CPU at 1.1 gigahertz, but we do have a burst up to 2.6. The GPU is the built-in Intel UHD 600. Four gigabytes of LP DDR4 RAM at 2133 megahertz. This is non-user upgradable. It is soldered to the main board. 32 gigabytes of internal storage plus a micro SD card slot, good up to a 256 gigabyte card. As for IO on the tablet itself, we have a micro USB, which will work as OTG, micro HDMI, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a single USB port on the keyboard. But if it's not connecting correctly, you can't even use this USB port. And the Wi-Fi was a big letdown here because we do do not have AC, so you cannot pick up that 5 gigahertz network. It's 802.11 NY5 plus Bluetooth 4.0. And this whole system is running Windows 10 in S mode, but you can easily upgrade to Windows 10 through the Microsoft Store. As for the display, 10.1 inch IPS, 1280 by 800, and this is much better than I initially thought. When I first took it out of the box, it had a plastic screen protector on it and it looked horrible. But as soon as I pulled that off, it did alleviate a lot of the glare. Now it's definitely not the best screen in the world, but for an $80 tablet, I think it does the job quite well. So there are a few shortcomings that I can personally overlook given the price that I paid. No AC Wi-Fi is a bummer, but I've been able to get by on 2.4 gigahertz for a long time, and I think I can with this tablet. Another thing would be the 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Now, I think 64 should have been the minimum here, but that's not what we have. But one thing that I cannot overlook is this keyboard not working. Even at $80, this keyboard should attach and it should work right out of the box. I shouldn't have to fiddle around with the position of the laptop to make it work. Now, if the tablet itself had a full-size USB port built in, I wouldn't be so upset, but we have to rely on that keyboard connecting correctly to access a full-size USB. I always like pulling these things apart just to see how they're cooled, and this is using a nice little copper heatsink over the CPU and the chipset. Plus, there's a copper pad on the back casing. You might notice some fingerprints here. These are not my fingerprints. I simply pulled this apart, and this is what was here from the factory. In most assembly plants, they use gloves, but I don't think they're using them where they're assembling these EVUs. So the screen on this thing really isn't that bad. Touch sensitivity and the image quality. I mean, it's only at 1280 by 800, but it looks pretty decent for what it is. 
It would definitely benefit a lot from AC Wi-Fi, but we only have that 802.11n chip built in, and unfortunately it's running in USB mode, so it will be a bit slower than if it was running in PCIe mode. The only time I really notice a hang-up is when I'm loading up YouTube for the very first time, but when I get into a video, buffering is fine. If I want to skip to the middle of a video without it being buffered, it'll go through just fine, but loading up the page for the first time does take a little bit. This device does have dual stereo speakers, but they're really not that loud, even with the volume jacked all the way up in the settings and on the YouTube video. So here it is. Before we get into the testing, I just wanted to go over this real quick. Now, the turbo speed on this does not go up to 2.6, and I think it has to do with the thermal throttling or the way they have the chip set up. But we have that N4000, 4 gigs of RAM, and the Intel UHD 600 graphics. I did run a quick Geekbench, and for single core, we scored an 1130. Usually when I test this same chip and other laptops, it's around 1800 for the single core, and 3000 for multi, so we're right on spot with the multi, but single core is much lower. I also ran a quick Wi-Fi test, and to my surprise, it's much faster than I thought it would be with that 2.4 gigahertz. Download at 48.5 megabits per second, upload 16. So it's not super fast, but it's not as slow as I've seen with some of these 2.4 gigahertz chipsets. So since we're here, I figured I'd test out some PC games. First up, we have CSGO, 720p, all low settings, getting an average of around 15, at least that's what Afterburner's saying. I'd say the average is around 12. Next on the list, the original version of Skyrim. Now, for some reason with these Celeron chips, I can never get sound out of HDMI with this specific game. 720p, low settings, I turned as much as I could down. We're getting an average of 24 FPS. Rocket League, 720p, all low settings, average 19. There was one game that performed quite well, but that's pretty much a given. This thing runs on pretty much everything, and that's Minecraft. This is actually the Windows Store version. Either way, it runs great on this little chipset. Moving over to some emulation, first up we have some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. This is Dead or Alive 2, getting a constant 60 FPS, and this ReDream emulator works great on these N4000 CPUs. PSP is another one that performs pretty decently on the N4000. This is God of War Chains of Olympus, a harder one to emulate, and you'll notice we're not at a constant 60, but with most of the other stuff in the catalog, you'll be able to run it perfectly. This is just a harder one to run, along with Killzone Liberation and Midnight Club Dub Edition. And finally, for the emulation segment, at least for this video, we have the Dolphin Emulator running some GameCube games. This is Super Mario Sunshine, and unfortunately, the way they have this chip set up in this tablet, it's just not going to cut it for GameCube. 
but in the past on other systems with this same chip, I've had really decent performance out of this. So in the end, even at an $80 price tag, I would stay away from this tablet. Unfortunately, I just ran into too many issues, especially with that keyboard not working correctly. There's not a lot of I.O. on the tablet itself. And overall, I've seen much better performance out of different machines with this same chip. I mean, it does work as a Windows 10 tablet. You can check your emails, you can get on YouTube, you can play Minecraft with it. But I don't see this lasting long, especially seeing the issues I had right out of the box. So if you've been thinking about picking one of these up, I would skip it. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this little tablet, just let me know in the comments below. I had the idea of turning this into an Android tablet by installing Bliss OS or another comparable Android operating system, but I also want to see how Linux performs on here. So if you're interested in seeing any of those videos, let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.